Hello and welcome to Youth in Agriculture. My name is Susan Mwangi and this is the number one show that focuses on young people who are making a livelihood in the agriculture sector. And we are actually on our way. We are heading to the Rakanithi. We are right now in our offices at Standard Group headquarters here at Mombasa Road. And in a few hours we will be landing in the Rakanithi where Anthony is waiting for us. Anthony is a young, uh, is a young entrepreneur, agripreneur. He's in the export market and he's farming a variety of fruits. So stay with us and let's see what the day has for us. Finally here at Inkondi, this is the Rakanidi. This is Anthony's farm. Really interesting to see fruits hanging this low on a tree. Many times we get to see these fruits uh, only from the market. And uh, this is eight acre farm where he's growing varieties of uh, apple mangoes, oranges and has avocado all for the export market. So we're going to be meeting uh, up with, uh, with Anthony. He's somewhere around in his farm and he's going to be sharing his journey with us on how he started, where he is at and generally just how the business has been. Stay with us. So let me ask you, when you were growing up, did you ever envision yourself as a farmer? Is uh, farming something you really used to admire? Yes, I used to admire farming because my father was a farmer. Mm -hmm. We used to go farming with him. We used to do the normal way of farming, you plant maize, beans. So I grew up in a farming setup. I used to you know the, the way kids grow up in rural places, you go to the farm every day, maybe weeding, harvesting, yeah. So I grew up as a village boy. I also loved farming by the yeah because food is everything. Yeah. That's how I grew up. So you're done with high school, yeah. you're done with your college. So what is the first thing that you do? Once Actually you uh, during my college time I studied vet medicine. I'm a vet doctor by professional. So when I finished school I worked for two years. I worked for two years as a field assistant for various NGOs. Then from there, I said, let me just develop my own farm. I went on the internet, I did some bit of research uh, in regards to farming, like what can I grow in the place I am because of the climate is so hot. So and there was challenges with water. So the best thing I could do is to do fruit farming. That's why I decided actually to start with mango farming. With at least I started with at least 50 trees. But I went on with time ending, ending, ending until uh, currently we are doing 600 trees in this farm and also in another farm. Yeah. So let me ask you, yeah. because we you know one of the challenges that young people have is uh, maybe to have an access to a farm. Yeah. How were you able to acquire or how did it come that you had this farm to you? Okay, this farm, uh, I inherited it from my father. This is the farm, we actually we used to plant maize and green grams with my late father. But when I finished high school, I sent to my mother because maybe if people don't like farming in this side, I can just try to do some farming so that I can encourage other people to do farming. Yeah, that's why actually after high school, university, then I came here, I got these eight acres of land, I started planting trees. Yeah, but with time, I also bought some other pieces of land where I'm growing avocados and mangoes and oranges. Yeah, for export and local market. Yeah. So after you did your research to yeah. find out which of the crop will do very well in this area, mm. you say that one of the things is that you have, uh, there isn't much water in this area. Yeah, yeah. So what is the other thing that made this area very conducive for you to grow the fruits that you The have? sun, this place is very hot, so the fruit here tastes quite good. So I decided to do fruit because fruits are very nice, with, they like a lot of sun actually. Yeah, so that's why I decided to do fruit farming. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you know somebody referred me to you and they told me that you are an exporter. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Uh, initially, we are doing. We, when we started growing mangoes, we are doing for the regional market. Maybe as far as we could sell, maybe in Isiolo, Meru, Embu. But with time, we had to. We overproduced actually, and we had to get some other better market. So I went to the internet. I sold the. I can export actually mangoes to United Arab Emirates. So I did my research. I, I the process that I needed to to get certified so that I can be an exporter. 
we got people from each CDA, they came, they assessed the farm, they sent it's good. They, uh, we had also to do some a little bit of management for the pests and diseases. So that actually with time I started by getting one client in Dubai who I could sell maybe like 500 cartons per week. Then with time I got more clients because of referrals. So currently we are doing uh, 4,000 cartons every week. Yeah, in batches of 500 on daily basis. Yeah. So when, HCD, uh, when you approached HCDA and you told them that you want to expand, to, ex, uh, to export. Yeah. So what are the, some of the requirements? What are some of the requirements that they wanted you to... You must be Global GAP certified. The farm has to be Global GAP certified. What does that mean? The, there's a requirement. Global GAP looks at various things. The way you produce your crop. They don't need to sell mangoes, then those mangoes become toxic to people. They want to make sure you are producing the best quality and also in terms of quantity. So the issue is about quality actually. The work of HCDA is to regulate the quality of the mangoes. Yeah, so they have to come to the farm. Not once, they actually come abrupt. They don't tell you they come, they see how you are growing them, the kind of pest you are using. You have to share the, the, the pest control program annually with them. You tell them this time I'll be spraying this chemical, this time I'll be spraying this chemical. Yeah. So they have to actually to get satisfied by global gap. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a globally, yeah, even if you're not farming here in Kenya, even a farmer in Uganda, if you want to export products to Kenya, it has to be Global GAP certified. But yeah, in Kenya, the people do Global GAP certification at HCDA. Yeah. So how much does it cost for you to get all the certifications? Roughly 200,000. Yeah, roughly 200,000. You also need to make sure. 200,000, please break it down for us. The, maybe the transport, you have to go to the offices, you have to make some payment, you have to engage experts who will give you the spring program if you do not actually do the... Actually, if you do not stand in maybe farming, they tell you at this time you need to spray this crop with this disease, with this pestine and this and this. Yeah. So, having heard that, yeah. we want you not to take us around the farm. Yeah, we okay. want to know, let's start with the mangoes. You okay. have the mangoes, you have the oranges and the has avocado. Yeah. We start with the mangoes, you tell us the entire process from planting, okay. the variety, and what are the requirements, and how long does it take for a fruit to mature. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Fine. Where do we start? We can, I can take you around. Okay. This is actually, this is the variety. Mm -hmm. This is the apple mango. Okay. Yeah, most of the varieties we grow here, we grow three varieties. We do apple mango, ngoe, and kent. But the major variety that we grow is the apple mango. Because that's the variety, or the cultivar, which has high demand in Europe and Middle East. Yeah, but also we have small quantity. We also do small shipment of goe because goe is very nice for juice making. Yeah, so this is the apple mango. Uh, what this is a grafted variety. Yeah, you plant the mother plant, the kienyeji one. You plant after some maybe a period of uh, six months, then you do the grafting. You do the grafting, then you wait for a period of two years, then you start getting the fruits. Yeah. So this tree here is how old? This is two two and a half years old. Two and a half years. Yeah, two and a half years. But we have some which are maybe uh, one year old, one and, one and a half years old. So yeah. from planting, yeah. you had to wait for two and a half yeah, years. Yeah, you have to wait for two and a half years. To get the first fruits. Yeah, yeah. How is the process like to nurture that tree until it's productive the way we can see your farm? First, you have to make sure the plant has good manure. Here in this farm, we use a lot of good manure because we are 95% organic. Then the 5% is inorganic, we use a little bit of fertilizer. So we, when you plant, you make sure the plant, you have dig the hole two by two feet. Then you plant the seedling. From there, you, plant, you irrigate. If this, the place is very hot, you put some minimum amount of water. Because a mango does not actually require so much water when you compare to other crops like maybe tomatoes, capsicum and the rest. So after planting, you irrigate, then you put manure for a period of, you can do manuring, you can do twice per year. Then after, that will be like four times until the tree matures enough to give you the fruits. So, uh, Anthony, today being a Saturday, yeah. I carried our newspaper, our standard uh, Saturday copy, yeah. and uh, we have a pullout called the Smart Harvest. It's very educative matters agriculture, and because you mentioned something about organic farming, I remember there is a headline I was reading while I was coming here, and the question I would like to ask you, first of all, let me read what the headlines say. Okay. While opponents say it has led to rise in cancer cases and en environmental damage, proponents say with the emergence of new pests and diseases, Kenya cannot be food secure without use of these chemicals. What's your take on that? Okay, for me, I think it's true we cannot do without pests. Even if you, there's no farm in this world which is 100% organic. 
like as we are doing mangoes, we have a lot of challenge with pest, especially the mango fruit fry. But what I can say, you have to use these pests responsibly. Like, you know, most of the people, you can't just spray mangoes like today, then you harvest within 30 seconds. You have to waste. Even when you look at the label for that chemical, it's written PHI, the post-harvest interval. That means when you spray this mango, you have to wait for a period of maybe seven days so that you can harvest. That means within those seven days, the, the chemical that will have been used, the concentration will have gone so low that it cannot cause cancer. Secondly, here in this farm, we always review our spring program. We use pesticides that are certified, that's that are certified globally because we are selling our mangoes to Dubai. The client who is in Dubai needs to know which kind of pesticide we spray into this mango, for how long did we wait from when we sprayed to when we are harvesting. Secondly, we use uh, other methods to control pests. We always spray after threshold levels are exceeded for the pest. We use traps, mango traps, I will show you one around the farm. The essence of the trap is to trap the pest. It has uh, the pheromone, so when the female fruit, the male fruit fry comes there, it dies. So we always do inspection. After every seven days, we go counting each trap, how much pest it has attracted. If each trap has trapped more than 700 fruit fly, then we, are, we go spraying with chemicals. We use uh, thunder or uh, profile. So we only spray when it's required. Not every time you are spraying, every time you are spraying. And the key issue is, all about observing PHI, the post harvest interval. You cannot spray today, then tomorrow you expect to sell mangoes to the market. Maybe the client will not be physically differentiated and say this mango has been sprayed, but it is very bad. It's lethal and it will cause cancer if you use it wrongly. Which are the common pests and diseases that affect the mango? The major common pests are mango fruit fly and uh, the mango seed weevil. Those are the two major uh, pest signs that affect the pests, sorry, that affect the mango. Yeah, the key one being the fruit fry. The fruit fry is, is a, a quarantine pest in, du, in Dubai especially. You cannot sell mango which has pests in Dubai. So you have to make sure the fruit fry and the seed weevil is well controlled so that you can sell your mangoes. The seed weevil is usually inside the seed of the mango. Yeah, it grows there, it has a small hole, a breather way to breathe. Then when you go eating the mango, the beetle will get out. Then the fruit fly will always make some small holes on the mango. Yeah, so those are the two. The disease that has major issue with mango is the uh, anthraconos. It's a big challenge to us, but especially that is a challenge in cold places. Here we don't have a challenge with diseases because it's very hot actually. The disease that uh, comes maybe it's sometimes for once in a year, once after maybe five years, of which you use appropriate uh, chemicals to, 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 to control. Mm -hmm.